smashing gas. I have the order sitting in the dressing room. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Glyn Mills, your compere for this evening. Good evening. Oh, thank you. I am human. Speak to me. <laughs> Very much. I'm glad you made it. In all the publicity I noticed about this show, it says, your compere, TV actor Glyn Mills. Now, I want you all to be honest now. Hands up those who've seen me on television. <laughs> Hands up those who haven't seen me on television. <laughs> Hands up those who couldn't care bloody less whether they've seen me on television. <laughs> Actually, for those of you who don't know, my most recent television appearance is in an ad extolling the virtues of British gas. So actually, I'm only here to read the meter. When Max Payne approached me and said, would I like to compare this evening's performance, I said, uh, compare it with what? I said, no, okay, yeah, sure, fine. I've never done any comparing before. It will be uh, interesting, frightening, but interesting. So I went home, I sat down, and I thought, well, what does a compare do, apart from introduce items of entertainment? So I consulted my Oxford dictionary, looked up the word compare, you know what it said? One who introduces items of entertainment. So I got a lot of help there. I read a little further and found out that the origin of compare is Godfather, which reminded me of a story I heard some time ago about a cub reporter way back in the 1920s who got the onerous task of interviewing the then Godfather, the head of the Mafia. He went with trepidation, knocked on the door, was ushered into the library, a library full of wonderful books, and above the books was a painting, every three or four feet. And he marveled at these paintings. He could see that they were originals, wonderful paintings. Eventually, after about 10 minutes' time, the Godfather appeared. And before starting the interview, the cub reporter screwed his courage to the sticking place and decided to ask about the paintings. And he said, excuse me, Godfather, um, I hope you won't feel me imprudent, but before we start, I would like to ask you about all these wonderful paintings around the room. And I wondered where, how you came by them. Oh, yes, said the Godfather. They are wonderful paintings. Over there, he says, is a Mendelssohn. Over there, a Brahms. Here, he said, two Tchaikovskys. And my favorite, the Beethoven. Now, don't you think that's a wonderful painting? The cup reporter paused for a moment and then decided he would jump in with both feet and he said, excuse me, Godfather, I do appreciate the value of all these wonderful paintings, but the names that you've put to all these paintings, they're all musicians. The Godfather looked at him coldly and said, sure, but for me, they paint. <laughs> I come from a very musical family. My mother used to let me play for hours on the linoleum. We were very, a very poor family. Oh, poorer than that. We were a very poor family. No, a little, a little poorer than that. That's it. That's how poor we were. We couldn't afford a piano. We sat around the Coleman paper on Sunday evenings and played the Coleman paper. But enough of my chat. On with the show, ladies and gentlemen. My next artist is a, a magician rather than a, mu a musician. And he's just spent a week's holiday mountaineering in Holland. Which just goes to prove there is no end to the magical talents of David Bobby.
Two minutes ago, we saw the undeniable musical talents of David Body, who together with our next artist were a, a double act in their own right and won many awards. But now both are going it alone. Will you welcome, please, this year's Evening News Young Entertainer of the Year, Mark Anderson. <laughs> 